Hi. Um, yeah, I needed a text editor, and that's why I integrated TinyMCE in my Qt application. Um, so a short, boring slide about me, um, but actually I only have 15 minutes, so. Um, I was looking for a text editor as I'm currently writing my own CMS, and uh, you know, usually what, what you get in, in UI frameworks are just text controls, which allow you a little bit of, you know, editing strings, and Qt also has like a rich text control where you can um, display and edit uh, HTML and rich text in a very basic way. But that's not really what I need. And then um, while doing some research on that topic, I saw that uh, KDE Frameworks 5, uh, which basically is uh, KDE libraries for Qt wrapped into a new uh, framework kind of, um, has something called KText Editor class. And which, if you really want to use C++, probably is the best way to go. And um, so if you have used, used things like Kate under Linux or somewhere else, um, that's probably where it builds up on. So um, also, yeah, WS Widgets has something like that in the library. I remember from my days when I did that. Um, so I've, I've been looking at KDE frameworks, and I was not too hesitant to use it as even if it's like the best solution for C++. Um, I'm not sure how good the Windows support is, and I do still work under Windows, and it should kind of work with Qt, but is there an, alter is, is there an alternative? And um, TinyMC is what I'm currently using, and maybe I can integrate it. Because this is the dependency graph for the KDE solution, and I thought maybe I found something which is easier to integrate into my application than uh, this uh, dependency math. So um, what I need is kind of a, what you see is what you get editor for HTML parts. Um, I want to be able to edit links, uh, to edit images, um, and TinyMCE is able to do all of that. And yeah, this is the end result. And this is the editor in my program, so as you see, it works. But how the hell do I get there? Um, so TinyMCE is uh, written in JavaScript, so it's kind of, you know, you have to have some HTML wrapping, and then uh, it's basically li living inside a browser. It's browser technology. It's not meant to be integrated into some kind of application, and uh, its interfaces are mainly uh, for integrating into a server environment or into a different environment. And then I have on the other side a QWeb view, which can give me kind of like a browser-like environment based on WebKit. It uh, offers also a bridge between C++ and JavaScript so that I can execute uh, commands from C++ to JavaScript and the other way around. Uh, of course, yeah, it's, it's a browser window, so it renders HTML and it has a C++ API, which basically is everything I would need to make this work. Um, in a perfect world. Tani MCE has a few limitations. Um, the first limitation is like everything which is in the browser stays there. So we have this little editor window, and this little editor window is basically where everything which is inside of Tani MCE can only go. So if we open a dialog, it will stay inside this window, and that's like really, really weird, and uh, the, um, the dialogs of Tani MCE do not scale at all. So there is like some Windows even, which are only closable because we have scroll bars. And then also the other, the other ha hand is um, integrating this is obviously a little bit of a hack. I really need to, to um, write my own plugins for in JavaScript. And one example is um, the, the official way to, to integrate images into the editor is actually uh, having either a JavaScript file on the file system or having kind of like a PHP file which actually generates this JavaScript file which contains a JavaScript variable pointing at a list of images. And yeah, you probably could use an executable for that on the file system, but I didn't try that. And, but I, I thought, well, how about if, if I give it a URL which is pointing to localhost and I have a server running there? Uh, well, guess what, that doesn't work. Um, so, I, I began to understand that I need to, to if, if I want to make that working, 
uh, because the, the basic functionality of editing text works out of the box. Um, but things like images, et cetera, are a bit more tricky. So I need to be able to replace the dialogues which I want to use and which are not big enough or which use like images um, with my own dialogues which live in the cute world and can, you know, live, exist outside of the window of the browser. Um, and yeah, the integration of images and links turns out to be really difficult as um, there's kind of like the same origin uh, policy in the browser and also there's um, another limitation which we will see soon. Um, because from, from the QWebKit view of things, um, I'm very easy able to, to just to um, register the object, um, which is basically wrapping the uh, whole editor into JavaScript so I can easily uh, call methods into C++, which are marked with Q invocable, or I could uh, emit a signal from JavaScript, which is then handled in Qt. Um, and of course, I also can execute JavaScript from C++. So this, is, this becomes very important when we actually want to hack this to display a dialog in C++ land and then execute JavaScript to return the result of that dialog to uh, the editor and actually display an image or change the HTML in the editor. So I have a class called HTML text editor. It's derived from QWeb view and it's basically wrapping the C++ interface for the text editor. And yeah, this is like a small version of the class. And um, I have one method which is invocable via uh, JavaScript, and I have another uh, method which I call via, uh, which I connect to a signal. So I have tried both ways. Uh, from the JavaScript point of view, it's basically the same syntax calling or uh, calling or emitting signals is like the same for JavaScript. Um, I'm not sure which is the best method, in, in my opinion. From, from, from the laziness, uh, invocable is better because I don't need to connect to that signal and don't have to, to register a signal for it. And maybe from the other point of view, from the performance, the signal might be better. And of course, uh, the class can also, it, there's one uh, method to execute JavaScript and this method will also lock the JavaScript which we uh, executed. And um, the constructor is not doing a lot because I'm actually starting this editor is a bit tricky and therefore there exists an init editor slot uh, which is called via a timer as we have no way of knowing that the editor actually is loaded, um, which was like really, really difficult to find out why some things didn't work on the start and later worked. Um, the reason is that I, I can get a signal for uh, having the HTML loaded, but then the JavaScript just started running and loading the editor and doing other things. And um, so I played around with, with timings and to, to, to figure out how long actually the JavaScript needs to load. And it's about like 150 to 200 milliseconds on uh, my machine at home. And here on the laptop, it takes a little bit longer. So the implementation from C++ point of view is uh, I have to expose the class itself to JavaScript. Um, I have to override the image link handlers and uh, display a Qt dialog and then execute JavaScript. Um, times MCE itself, uh, I had to write plugins which actually handle the, um, the buttons and other things and commands in the editor so that I have to replace, I really have to hack the editor here to replace certain calls in JavaScript with my own JavaScript and then call into C++ and do basically the, the round trip. And then uh, one problem I have is I need actually like a host file for the editor, which has to be a physical HTML file. Um, loading just a random HTML string containing everything which would be needed to run it didn't work. Um, so this HTML file contains the text area and also contains uh, the JavaScript needed to load Tani MCE and uh, the, the physical location in the directory where it is, is the base path for the editor, which means that all 
all images or other things which are added uh, must have a relative path or must be in that directory to this editor, uh, which, for example, means that if, if I have several folders in my um, CMS, I currently have to copy that file into each of those. Um, this is a limitation which I'm currently trying to, to find out if I can work uh, around it, but uh, from the current uh, point of view, it seems to be difficult. So in the constructor, I only do uh, disable clicking on links because otherwise we would uh, open links in the editor where we're currently working on. And that uh, was really a big surprise when that happened. So I turned that off and I connect to the signal. Um, in, the, in this method, I actually set the base path, which is important to first know which, which editor HTML I should load. And I then also uh, associate this with, an, with the current object uh, of, uh, in JavaScript, which then is called via window notation. I will show you that later. And yeah, here's the, the queue timer, and I uh, use this to initialize the, um, the object later. So um, this is the code for onSelect image, which first displays the image dialog. And then we'll just select boost, which is then just being displayed in the editor via executing this JavaScript in the exec JavaScript method, which just, uh, yeah, uh, this main frame is basically the pointer to the HTML frame in the C++ implementation of QWebKit, which holds our website and the editor, and we just evaluate the JavaScript there and log it before so that I know what kind of JavaScript I have executed. And yeah, I'm not very good at JavaScript, so I'm just gonna show you a few little lines of uh, JavaScript. Um, this is how, um, as we have added this object, which, which is ourselves, um, is a C++ object actually, to the window variable of JavaScript, and we're able to uh, call methods and emit signals, which is the same syntax actually, and we also could uh, hand over um, parameters from JavaScript. And yeah, then I have to, to add a button to, to the editor and a little bit of other setup, and then basically it works. Um, current limitation, uh, lots of resources get allocated and wasted for this. One editor should be enough in my opinion, but instead I have like an editor that's loaded. Um, the base path and a few other limitations don't really mix up, especially with the editor HTML. I'm currently not really happy, but I tried to set the base URI of the editor and that does not work in JavaScript. And yeah, um, it's really difficult to, to, doubt, to debug JavaScript and WebKit inside a Qt application. And yeah, what I also would need is a, a text editor for HTML text, uh, CSS, JavaScript, uh, Tiny MCE is, in my opinion, no good for that, so uh, maybe I need some other web editors, and for example, Atom would not be an alternative. I looked at Atom, but uh, Atom is based on Node.js and runs in, like, in its own environment and runtime. Therefore, it's not uh, really able to integrate in any, any other application. So the end result is I have a working HTML editor, some fine tuning is still needed. Um, and yeah, some parts always will be a hack. Tiny MCE, the 4X branch, the newest branch of Tiny MCE did not run in the QWeb kit. Uh, so that's why I also uh, used the 3 version, which also is the version I'm used to work with, so that's fine. And yeah, that's everything. <laughs>